All right. So food gives us two types of nutrients, right? It gives us macronutrients, and macronutrients contain calories. You can see up on the slide. Fat, carbohydrate, and protein. And what I've told you so far, you're getting this into your heads, is that Americans eat too much fat, too much carbohydrate, and too much protein. We're consuming too much calories. And the reason we're consuming too much calories is because we're eating macronutrients that are not micronutrient rich. Micronutrients suppress the apostat. Micronutrients do not contain calories. They're things like vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and antioxidants. Americans are ubiquitously deficient in micronutrients because they're eating so many processed foods and so many animal products. They're not eating enough plant food. And it's the plant food, particularly the vegetables, that have the most calories. What, what do you think is the most powerful classification of food to fight cancer? Is the healthiest food to fight cancer? Is it donuts, cookies, rice cakes, breakfast bars, chips, soft drinks, cheese doodles, Twinkies, or donuts? Which is it? Or, or, or is it eggs? Or is it vegetables? It's vet beans are really powerfully protective against cancer, but vegetables are probably the strongest, particularly green vegetables, the most powerful fighters against cancer. But putting all those vegetables together in one category, how many vegetables, what's the percent of the average American diet contains vegetables? What percent of vegetables Americans are eating? Two percent. Good guess. You're co this is a very educated group. You know, so I'm saying here that we need to eat more micronutrients and less macronutrients. You guys have that, right? What I'm saying here is H equals N over C. That's what I've been talking about for the last 10 minutes. I'm saying that your healthy life expectancy, how long you're going to live, and the quality of your life in your later years, and how good you're going to feel, and how smart you're going to be, and how much creative you're going to be, and happy you're going to be, are linked to the micronutrient per calorie density of your diet. That means the more you eat the oil and the bread and the meat, and the cookies and the crackers, the more you throw empty calories into that body of yours, you're shortening your lifespan and you're destroying your brain. And the more you eat foods that contain antioxidants and phytochemicals and nutrients, you're extending your lifespan, you're protecting your brain, and you're also decreasing your desire to want to overeat. Did you get that? Almost all overweight people are micronutrient deficient. Because if they ate enough high nutrient foods, it would be very hard to overeat. So that says the first principle. On the bottom, it says they're the first principle of a nutritarian diet. That's the most important principle. That's what I told you 10 minutes ago when I said moderate caloric restriction in an environment of micronutrient excellence, right? You guys got this now. It's very important to get this properly because a low calorie intake that's high in nutrients slows the aging process. And look, at, and, they, and look at the slide that's going over here that what happens? It reduces inflammation, it stops free radical formation, it increases DNA repair, it stops genetic alterations, it increases genetic repair, it removes toxins from the cells, and of course it removes, you know, slows the metabolic rate in the process. You know, your body's like a little machine, it's like a little factory making product here. When you metabolize product, and the product you're metabolizing are calories, when you metabolize product, you form toxins, predominantly free radicals. When you metabolize any calories, as a result of the utilization of those calories, you form free radicals that age you. Eating ages you. But when you're eating foods that are high in micronutrients and phytochemicals and antioxidants, the foods supply the antioxidation effect that diffuses the accumulation of free radicals created from the metabolism of that food. Did you follow what I just said? Natural foods prevent the formation of those free radicals because they contain the, radical, the free radical fighters so, they're making, so, they don't, so eating doesn't harm you. Eating only harms you when you're eating foods that don't contain the free radical fighters. That's a band, I think, called the Free Radical Fighters, or the Foo Fighters, or something like that. <laughs> they must know something about nutrition. Now, the foods with the most powerful 
free radical fighting ability are vegetables, particularly colorful vegetables. For example, a study showed that the Fiji Islanders who smoke a lot of cigarettes had very low rates of lung cancer relative and compared to the Hawaiian Islanders who hardly smoke. More lung cancer among the Hawaiians smoking much less because the Hawaiians weren't eating as much green vegetables as the Fiji Islanders were. Even with regard to smoking, even with regard to exposure to the excess sun with skin cancer, even with regard to exposure to asbestos, even with regard to exposure to a known carcinogen, the exposure to green vegetables mitigates or lessens the cancer potential of other risk factors. Did you follow what I just said? There are lots of things that cause cancer, but all those things that cause cancer, the, the probability of them causing cancer is reduced dramatically because these vegetables arm the mechanism in the cell with the ability to repair and remove toxins and to prevent damage from accumulating. Our cells have the ability to repair the damage that if left unchecked would lead to cancer. The buildup of methylation defects, the buildup of DNA crosslinks being broken, the DNA of, of toxic material, all these things that we occur that know that cause cancer are diffused by vegetables. You know, I always say, we've landed the man on the moon already. And what I mean by that is we already know how to prevent cancer. We already know to win the war on cancer in America. We can already wipe out more than 90% of all breast cancer and more than 90% of all prostate cancer, all these common cancers. I'm saying more than 90% conservatively. Because a lot of populations, we have studies on 50 years ago and more, of populations around the world that had less than 100 times less the cancer rates we have today in this country. So I'm being conservative to say reduce it by 90%, it's more like reducing it by 99%, because it's what other countries, other primitive populations had very low cancer rates. The first cancers even mentioned in the medical literature in the 1740s that they found was most prevalent was scrotal cancer found in people working in chimney sweeps. Chimney sweeps was a job. They were cheating out chimneys, they would get scrotal cancer. These cancers are new phenomena in human history. We don't have to get cancer. You've been, thinking, you've been taught it's the normal consequence of aging and everybody gets it, right? And you have no role to play if you get cancer. It's just genetic or just was luck. What about when a child gets cancer at age two years old? What did they do wrong? Well, we know, the, we know the, that the parents diet, not just during pregnancy, but even the parents' diet prior to conception affects the health of the child and the risk of childhood cancer or brain tumor formation. Did you follow that? And what do you think is shown to be protective against childhood cancer? Vegetables! If the mothers eat green vegetables through their, ch through their childbearing years and years before they give birth, even conceive the baby. But you know what we do as medical professions and health professionals? We give people folic acid pills because their diet is deficient in folate and their body is deficient in folate from not eating vegetables. So we give them a pill so they don't have to think of eating vegetables to get folate. They can just keep on their fast food diet and have a kid with cancer now. We do all the wrong things. Everything wrong, that's what the medical profession does. We always have a pill solution for something. You know, people don't like the answer. We found the war, we, we solved the and won the way on cancer already in the scientific literature, but people are looking for a different answer. Instead of vegetables, they want an answer to be a pill, like folic acid. They want a pill so they can still smoke three packs a day and not get lung cancer with this pill. They want magic. Life is not a fairy tale. It's real. And you are what you eat. You got that? Let me, this is, I'm sorry, but I have to get through this lecture and I can't take Q&A. The answer is no, but let me, let me please, I prefer to hold the questions to the end. Okay, thank you. So, most of these studies show that vegetables are protective, but if we investigate the most powerful foods against cancer, in most of the studies, we find that raw vegetables have an enhanced protective effect compared to cooked. Not that cooked aren't protective, but there's a factor in raw vegetables that make them even more protective, particularly raw green vegetables and raw cruciferous green vegetables because they're the food richest in the ability to produce those ITCs or isothiocyanides that have powerful effects on 
activating the ARE, the ARE is the antioxidant response element in the cell, is activated by flavonoids and by the ITCs from green vegetables. And without those vegetables, without greens, your cells don't function normally. You can't be normal without the inclusion of green vegetables in your diet. You're living just a mere shell of the person you could have become. Vegetables also have the most protection against stabilizing and repair and protection of endothelial function and endothelial health. The endothelium is the lining of your blood vessels. And what I'm saying right now is that green vegetables activate biological mechanisms that keep the inner lining of your blood vessels smooth and slippery and preventing from plaque from adhering or developing on the interior wall of your blood vessels if you eat those green vegetables. So whether it's protection against dementia, protection against cancer, protection against strokes, or protection against heart disease. If I ask you the question, what food is the most protective against any of these chronic diseases, the right answer is always going to be green vegetables. Right? What does the other primates eat, mostly? What does a gorilla and baboon and chimpanzee mostly eat as their main source of bulk of calories? No. <laughs> vegetables. Put a muzzle on that guy. <laughs> All right, so my Nutrient IQ app, phone app, is not out yet. It's coming out in a couple of weeks. But this app gives people a fun game they could play, a rough idea of the nutrient levels of these foods comparatively. And there's not, you know, I don't want people to get crazy about comparing one natural health food to another. They're all super healthy. The more variety and the more symphony you get of nutrients from your diet, of different types of food, even different types of mushrooms, even different types of onions, even different types of vegetables are important. The more variety in your diet of these healthy natural foods, the longer you live. But you see that the, the processed foods and the animal products, and we're dividing food into three categories, processed foods, animal products, and plant foods, it's the unrefined plant foods where all the money's at. That's where all the nutrient levels are at. And I divide this so athletes and younger people too particularly can play the game and try to get all those high nutrients into the body by adding enough of those foods, proportions. So what I'm saying is that not only are these foods rich in nutrients and fiber, and I've already think I've told you that the high fiber content and the high nutrient content makes you desire less calories. Didn't I tell you that earlier? I'm also telling you here that all these anti-cancer foods, like raw vegetables, like beets and snow peas and fennel and tomatoes and you know, all, the, all the low sugar fruits like kumquats and berries and pomegranate and, and cherries and all these and the cooked green vegetables and the non-green cooked vegetables like mushrooms and eggplants and, and squashes, and they're super low in calories. They, they don't have more than 100 calories per pound. How many pounds can you fit into that one liter of a stomach that you have? You can't fit any calories in of natural foods. It's impossible to come overweight. The average woman in America is 60 pounds overweight. She couldn't have become 60 pounds overweight if she's eating these foods. It's impossible. You can't fit that many calories into the stomach. You have to pour oil on your food or be adding white flour or be adding meats and, and animal products. You, you, the stomach gets filled up. You're not supposed to eat till you're full anyway. When you're eating a meal, get up from the table, push yourself away, see, feel your stomach and say, do I think I had enough? Don't eat till you're uncomfortable. Just eat so you can make it to the next meal without getting too hungry, too uncomfortably hungry. Eat as little as you can. Because you know these foods have, are so rich in nutrients, you're chewing them well, and you're appreciating them because you're realizing the life-giving power of these foods. And then you're realizing the blessing of being able to eat this food and with this life-giving power it has in it. And the way we can make it into these delicious recipes to taste great. You know, with a lot of thinking, you know, we know it's imp almost impossible to become overweight if you're eating a healthy diet, eating natural foods, you have to be eating processed foods to get overweight. And that's how we know with lots of scientific study and, and contemplation that Skipper never really lived on that island.
Let me just tell you something else. That smiling and laughing makes you live longer too. And the joke doesn't have to be funny. If you just smile and laugh at anything, it makes you live longer. So if I tell you the stupidest joke, and you, right, and you know what? I may have told that joke 400 times. It's still okay. <laughs>